Hello, my little babies. Today, we're gonna be comparing a French omelet to my omelet recipe. I've always been told that I make the best omelet by several people. Which omelet should I make first? We're gonna start with the French omelet. This is a very simple, delicate omelet. I honestly feel like it's sort of similar to the way that I make my omelet, but there are some key differences that I will be explaining along the way. So our French omelet is going to have three eggs. You know what, actually, let me start heating my pan and I need a towel. Chefs are so smart for putting towels in their little pockets like this. I mean, it makes life so much easier. I feel like I need to start carrying a towel in my pocket at all times because I'm constantly wiping stuff on my body. So we're gonna start heating our pan to medium high heat. I hope, I hope that this pan works because I actually tried filming this video like five days ago and unfortunately my always pan nonstick was not non-sticking and you need good nonstick to make a French omelet. And also the induction burner was heating really weird. It was really weird, okay? This is an epic fail. And then I was like, oh, I'm gonna use butane. I got a gas burner, like an individual like camping stove. And then I went and I bought a butane cartridge at Ace Hardware. And I'm sorry, but the precautions on the back scared me too badly to try the gas burner here. I know it would be ideal for making an omelet, but oh my God, it's like, this can explode, it can ignite, use a well-ventilated area. A bottle like this, even like whipped cream, sometimes I'm like, okay, I don't know what's gonna go on with this can and I need to be careful because if it explodes and metal shards hit my face, I'm gonna be really upset. So anyway, long story short, that has been my adventure thus far with this video. And I hope that this pan works well with the induction burner. Real quick, I'm gonna throw a hefty tablespoon of Kerrygold butter into our pan. I'm talking a real hefty tablespoon. And we're just gonna let that start to melt and sizzle while we whisk our eggs. I think I might have the heat too high. The problem with this induction burner is that the heating element is only like seven inches wide and this pan is 10 inches wide. So there's always a hot spot in the middle. So I'm hoping this works out. Okay, that's far too hot. Ah! I'm gonna take a generous amount of kosher salt. It's three eggs, so yeah, that should be good. And we're just gonna start whisking away for about a minute or two. The consistency will get like pretty frothy and it's gonna be super liquidy. Why am I already tired? My arm is already like giving out. I have the weakest arms in the world. Ah, oh, me arm. All right, about a minute later, we have a super runny consistency. Like it just drains right back in onto itself and there's a little bit of froth on the top. Perfect. Okay, now it's time to start the delicate process of cooking this French omelet. This is where I feel like there's a lot of room for error. So, ugh, I'm nervous, I'm nervous, I'm nervous. This could go very wrongly. I'm just gonna pour the eggs in. And we're immediately gonna start agitating the eggs and forming curds all throughout. Bonjour. Okay, okay, it's going well. The non-stick is non-sticking. Basically, you form curds and then you start spreading everything out evenly back into an omelet. Disc shape, if you will. I'm just gonna let that cook for a second. We don't want any color on this omelet. It's supposed to just be this nice, supple, soft egg. This looks a little bit thick for my liking, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I wanna make sure that she's still a little runny inside when we start folding her over, but not too runny. I think it might be time to start folding her over. Just to be extra French, I'm gonna throw a couple of pads of butter inside because I feel like you can never have too much butter in moments like these. And I'm just gonna start delicately folding her over onto herself. I'm lowering my heat because I feel like, oh no, she's browning, oh no. Oh no, she's browned. Shoot, I think my heat was too high. This is a fail French omelet. I don't know, I think I have to redo this. <laughs> my first French omelet is a fail. There's not supposed to be any browning on it. See that? It got overcooked. Let me whip up the eggs again and we're gonna start from zero. I have seen that this is not a foolproof method like I was telling you guys. It's a very delicate process. I thought I was slaying that. I knew in my gut, I was like, I think this is done, but I was like, it kind of looks raw. Ugh. I knew I should have stopped it earlier. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. This is Chaos Kitchen, you guys. Don't forget. Oh no, I don't have my garbage here. I'm just gonna set that on that stool down there. Nothing to see here. Hefty tablespoon of butter going in our pan. I'm gonna leave it on a lower heat this time as to not brown our French omelet. Three eggs. Oh my God, I'm running low on eggs. I can't mess this one up because I don't have enough eggs. Generous. One to two minutes, I'm scrambling these. Wait, I need to smear our butter around. Wah! Huh. 
Chase. We cannot exceed this heat. Oh, two minutes are on the chopping block. I miss Chopped. I used to be obsessed with that show. And then Cutthroat Kitchen, Elton Brown. I love Elton Brown. He's my inspiration. He's probably my favorite celebrity chef. His show, Good Eats, was just like such a quirky, fun show back in the day. Did anybody else watch that? Perfect texture. It's time. I'm feeling confident, y'all. I'm just not gonna hesitate. We're gonna go in to our pan yet again. And we need to start curding right away. Curd your loins. I don't know whatever that means, but I think it's from like Devil Wears Prada or something. What is that from? Okay, we are curding. Delicate, delicate process, McKennell. Don't forget. I'm nervous, I'm nervous, all right. Okay, oh no, I feel like she's sticking. I'm kind of scared. Did I curd enough? I, I just don't feel like I curded enough. Now I feel like it's not warm enough. Oh, jeez. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. I'm just gonna crank the heat for one second because maybe I could start, no, it's not staying together. Oh no. God, I thought this was gonna be way easier to make. Okay, wait, 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 heat's going down. I'm gonna start folding. If this gets overcooked again, my life is over. <gasps> it's perfect. Oh. oh, I did it, I did it, I did it, I did it. A French omelet. It's a little runny on the bottom. Is there something we could do about that? Okay, hold on, I'm gonna cook it like omu rice on the side. Okay. I'm calling it. Seam side down. Oh, hot. Hot. I'm burning my fingers off. Bonjour. Here is our French omelet. Okay, she looks perfect. She looks lovely. She looks great. Second time's a charm. I did not give up hope and I'm glad. Okay, now delicately and go. Oh, wait, wait. A little spring onion. A little spring onion. I need my knife. I see a lot of people usually use chives on this. The store was out of chives. I don't know why, but these days the store is always out of chives. Is this on? Hold on. Oh, I've got an essential part as well. We need to put a little bit of butter on top of her to get that shiny, glossy finish. Bonjour. <laughs> I don't know. And then the final touch, a little bit of spring onion. You see, you feeling it? Are you seeing the vision? I think it looks good. Okay, now quickly, we must make my omelet. I wanna do a side by side, so I'm gonna move quickly so that doesn't get too cold. This cooks really fast, so I'm not too worried about it. Hold on, why isn't this heating? There we go. I'm starting to heat our pan. Okay, I only use two eggs in my omelet, even for this size pan, because I love a thin egg. When things get too eggy, it gets gross. I don't like it any longer. I also whisk with a fork, and I take out the umbilical cords, because they gross me out and they freak me out, and I don't want to see them. Oh my God, there's a shell in there. Who am I? I'm a shell of the man I used to be after this. I got it, okay. I never crack shells into my eggs. I'm just kind of frazzled right now. <laughs> it's a little bit of a frantic process. I also put just regular plain salt into the mix. That's where it's similar in my book. And then I start whisking with a fork. I think maybe the reason I like to whisk with a fork is because whisking with a whisk is too hard on my forearm, as you guys saw. I need to put butter into the pan before it gets too hot. I love this Land Lakes Butter Sea Salt Olive Oil Blend. I either use this or I just use like regular store brand butter. Anywho, I'm putting about a tablespoon into the pan. Kerrygold is good and fancy, but Honestly, like, I don't know if I can actually taste the difference. I guess I'm gonna find out now when I do our side by side. And similarly, I whisk for about a minute or so, um, just till it looks right. And to me, that looks right. And I do have a secret special ingredient that really makes mine stand apart from the French omelet. Okay, she's starting to sizzle. I need a lid, I just realized. I have it on like a medium heat. I'm gonna pour all of these eggs in. Ooh, I don't know how well this is gonna do in this pan. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. It's okay. And then I'm gonna cover it on like a medium heat. I'm gonna let it sit for a, like a little minute. Just enough to let some of the top of it cook on its own through the heat that is accumulating from the lid. I also do not like any browning on mine. I kind of start to push in the sides, make sure everything's not sticking. So I don't really agitate the omelet at all. I just let it like do its thing in there. And now, are you ready to see my secret ingredient? <laughs> It's white American cheese. Omelets have cheese. One thing about me is I'm gonna put cheese in my omelet and it's gonna be a white American cheese. I mean, I also do like using Kraft Singles like yellow American. That works just as well. So I usually use like one and a half to two pieces. If you put too much, it gets kind of gross. So don't put too much. And I like to lay it out while there's still a little bit of wetness on the omelet. Like you see, it's not fully cooked yet inside because I kind of like that texture that it gives. I'm dropping the heat to low and I'm gonna cover it for a sec to let the cheese melt. And I'm gonna clean up in the meantime. And I'm cutting the heat 
and I'm just gonna gently, this is where the French omelet is smarter than me. I like to fold it over in half, but sometimes it's just too delicate like to do that because it's only two eggs on such a large pan. If I'm using the smaller pan, I only do one egg. Like sometimes I do a one egg omelet and it's this big and it's delicious that way as well. I just like the ratio to be like super skinny, tiny little skinny egg. Oh my God, she looks perfect for my standards. There's no browning on her. Another similarity that my omelet has is I do not like any browning on her. If she does get brown in any way, the omelet is ruined, it's not gonna be the same, and I just simply will not enjoy it. And then to plate it, I kinda just slip it onto the plate like so. And there you have my homemade omelet. Very simple still, but a little bit different than the French omelet. And here is our side by side. Mine versus the French omelet. Very similar in color, but mine just has a certain American flair to it with that cheese in there. It's time for our taste test. Because I know how that tastes already, I'm gonna try our French omelet first. I'm gonna cut off of this little edge to see our runny cross section. I'm very excited actually to see how the middle of this thing looks. Oh yeah, that looks perfect. Honestly, I did a really great job. I'm actually very proud of myself. And I'm excited to take a bite because I do love a runny egg. It's like the runniness is the cheese in a French omelet. All right, I got myself a nice little bite. Mm. I mean, that's just delicious. Have a bite. This is really good and so delicate and rich. Mmm. Whoa, it's like a fatty bomb in my mouth. Between the butter and the soft egg yolk, it's a little bit eggy for me. I like the little bit of spring onion in there. I feel like it adds just a little layer of flavor. Super delish. I'm gonna go in with my omelet. I know how she tastes, but side by side, she might come off a little differently. This I love, y'all. Let me just show you how flat my omelet really is. Look at that cross section. The cheese is as thick as the egg, which is what I like. It's like a crepe almost, you know? And this is my renowned omelet. Got myself a nice bite. I'm in, girl. Girl, girl, girl. This is so good. Mmm. No. I'm sorry, French omelet, but... Mmm. The less egg just makes it so much better. I'm sorry, mine wins. I'm sorry to the French, but mine wins. You know what I usually do with my omelet too? I usually either eat it plain with red hot or I put it on a piece of toast and eat it like an open-faced sandwich. It's a perfect ratio with some sourdough toast. You just throw a nice slab onto it. It's the freaking best, I'm telling you. French people are just like so fancy. I don't know. It's great. It's delicious. I enjoy it more than like an omelet that you get at a diner where it's super thick and like the texture of foam. I hate that. This is definitely more delicious, but I think keeping it thinner and adding cheese just elevates it, you know? Here's a little bite with red hot. Have a bite. Mmm. Mmm. Y'all gotta try out my omelet recipe. I know it's simple, but it really is delicious. The French omelet ain't bad either, but something about mine just tingles me inside. Alrighty, well, I guess that'll do it for this episode. Thank you so much for joining me. As always, please comment below any suggestions you have for foods you wanna see me cook, foods you wanna see me try, foods you wanna see me compare. I'm open to any ideas on this page. I'm really excited to start posting consistently on here. This is like my passion project that I'm doing right now. And um, if you're here from TikTok, well, I'm tipping my fedora to you. All right, bye guys. Love you so much. My nose is a little oney from the wet hot.